with the horse <laughs> just taking off. <laughs> You're ready. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to get started with the service today. And I'm going to try to take my time with it, if you don't mind, because this is very important. Not that all the uh, messages haven't been important, but this one took me a little longer this morning. Uh, hallelujah, because God was giving me some divine revelation and insight of what is actually going on today. So you, the, you see the title, it says, the folly of idolatry. And it's so easy to practice idolatry without knowing it. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just a thin line between, between worshiping God in truth and worshiping idols. Uh, so the key scripture is going to be Isaiah 44, 6 to 12. Holy Spirit, help me. God, God. Speak through me today. Move me out the way, Father God, and take completely over. Anoint my lips, Father God, to say what thus saith the Lord God. Let not this word be turned back to you, void God. But God, let it accomplish what you sent it to do, Father God. Be glorified through your word, God. God, this is a very, very important message. I know how important it is. So, God, I'm going to need your help and your strength, Father God. I bind up the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. I bind up the spirit of pride in the name of Jesus, Father God, so that this word will be received in their hearts, God. Humble everybody under the sound of my voice, Father God, so that it could get the divine revelation out of this word today, God. Cover your word, God. Seal your word, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So the uh, title, um, I'm sorry, the uh, key scripture is coming out of Isaiah 44, 6 to 12. So what is idolatry? Idolatry is the worship of false gods and man-made idols. Now, I know some people have seen, I know when I go in the nail place, they have like that statue sitting there. I don't even know what the statue is called, but they be feeding that statue food and stuff. It be rotten bananas and fruit sitting there. <laughs> and so that's a, a, a statue that they are worshiping. And then you have people that worship Buddha. So there's different gods that people have chosen to worship. But how many know that there's only one God? Hallelujah that made heaven and earth. Those guys didn't make heaven and earth. Those guys didn't create us. Hallelujah. He's God of God, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Hallelujah. He is the only God that we are supposed to be worshiping. So I'm going to turn to uh, Isaiah 44, 612 to get it started, to kick it off. And please receive his word today with a humble heart. Uh, never disagree with the word of God. If I read it out of the Bible, that's the word of God. And you can't say, oh, that can't be true unless you don't believe in the Bible, then you can say that. But if you believe in the word of God and you believe in Jesus Christ, then whatever comes out of his word, then you should believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. Because sometimes the enemy, he likes to play with that word. He don't want you to believe that word. He likes to... Uh, twist the word and he wants to debate the word with you and argue about the word you know people have tried to do that with me but i don't argue or debate about god's word because in my heart that's not what god's word is for god's word is for to comfort our hearts to deliver us to heal us um to teach us how to have a more intimate relationship to reveal his character to us so if you're sitting back de debating the word and the peace is not in the conversation because God is a God of peace, that means you arguing with Satan over God's word. Amen. So you don't want to debate or argue about the word with anybody because there's no fruit in that. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah 44, 6 to 12. And the title says, there is no other God. 
Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no other God. Hallelujah. And who could proclaim as I do? Then let him declare it and sit it in order for me. Since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come. Let them show these then. Do not. Yeah. 12. I'm sorry. Do not fear nor be afraid. Have I not told you from time and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not. Idolatry is foolishness. Th those who make images, all of them are useless. And their precious things shall not profit. Hear that? Hallelujah. The Lord say all those images and false gods that people make and worship, there's no profit in them. They will not profit. Uh, it's just, you know, you're believing in nothing, <laughs> to, to tell the truth. You're believing in something that has absolutely no power, can't do a thing for you. You know, you're just believing in a lie. But to believe in God, the, God has proven himself over and over again. There is some things that man can't explain about how we are born. The scientists say, you know, how a baby is formed in the womb. And they try to explain it as much as possible. But there is some things that man just don't know. Amen. Creation is of God. He created us. Hallelujah. And he created us to serve and to worship him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Those who make images of them are useless and their precious things shall not profit. They are their own witness. They neither see nor know that they may be ashamed. Who would form a God or mold an image that profits him nothing? God is calling them stupid right here. That's what it sounds like to me. He says, who would form a God or mold an image that profits nothing? Surely all his companions would be ashamed. That means his companions is people that have decided to worship and serve these uh, worthless idols. That's their companions. Hallelujah. Just like uh, the word of God say, he's a friend to us. He, God is our friend. God is our companion. Hallelujah. And 11 says, surely all his companions would be ashamed. And the workmen that are mere men, that's men that's making these statues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that has no benefit whatsoever. Hallelujah. How, that's just like an idol worship and go a long way. Like you can worship material things. You can worship a house. You can worship a car. You can, um, you can worship things, clothes. You can worship. I know uh, a while back, I always got a story. I don't, know, I don't know. Maybe God let me get these stuff running to people. And then God give me these stories for later. But I ran into this man and he had a good job making six figures. And he had a big, beautiful house, wonderful family. And uh, he got fired from his job. So he lost the job, lost the house. And the wife left him, obviously. She wasn't in love. She was in love with his money. <laughs> Obviously, she was a gold digger. <laughs> but the wife left him, and I, me and a friend of mine was exercising and walking, and she knew the guy, and we ran into him. And she walked to the car and was talking to him, and I stood back. But as I stood back, I seen the spirit of suicide on the guy. And uh, she was like, how are you doing? He said, I'm not doing so good. Then he started telling her about everything that he had lost. And immediately in my mind, that was his God. That's what he worshiped. And now that he don't have these things, he feel like there's no reason to live. Sometimes when people lose everything, they say, I don't want to live. You know, that's because they have put all their hope, all their security, hallelujah, in things, you know. So I walked over to the car and I looked at him. And I told him, I said, you know, I see the spirit of suicide on you. He said, he started crying. He said, yeah, you're right. He said, I had planned on committing suicide tonight, you know. And, you know, I ministered to him and I told him, I said, you know what? Those are worthless things. 
Life is more than things. You got to put your hope in Jesus Christ. You don't know what God has for you tomorrow. Give your life to Christ. God can restore everything. There's nothing that you could lose that God can't restore, sir. Hallelujah. And so I wanted to make the point of idol worshiping and how we worship. And how about people? Have you ever worshiped a person? You in love, okay? But you shouldn't love anybody more than you love God. I know I've said that over and over again. And I probably say it a thousand times more, you know, because it's the truth. You love nobody more than God and you put nobody before God because to put your trust in man, it is a curse, an absolutely curse. And man will let you down every time. The word of God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But man will, man or woman will leave you and forsake you. If you're not, if things ain't going right or they done got tired of you or the thrill is gone or if they find something they think is better or if they find somebody they think that could do more for them, guess what? They gone. But God, I have found, hallelujah, I have found with my walk with Christ, he never leaves me. Even when I fell short, he never left me. Get back up, my daughter. You can do it. You can do it. He's my biggest fan. Hallelujah. He encourages me. He tells me my worth. Hallelujah. There is nobody like God. Hallelujah. Put all your hope, your trust, and your faith in God and not people. People will destroy you. Hallelujah. People are double-minded. God is stable. He never changed. The word of God say he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You know what that tells me? That God is faithful and he never changed. He's the same God. Hallelujah. That was with Israel back in with the Israelites. And he's the same God that is faithful to us today. So put all your hope and trust in God. You can make people an idol. And that's the biggest thing. Uh, I want to just stay here for a minute about idolizing people. I see people idolize people on social media. You know, oh, they did this. They did that. By the grace of God, they did anything. Hallelujah. Because man is nothing without God. Hallelujah. They can wake up and don't even have their right mind. Then what? Hallelujah. That wisdom to, uh, to, to do things, to write books, to write songs, all that came from God because you could wake up and don't even be in your right mind and don't even know your name. Hallelujah. So you can't put your trust. I'm sorry. You can't idolize people and lift people up. I see they be posting more about people than they do God. Hallelujah. And I know people in my timeline be like, that's all she posts about is Jesus. Yeah, because he's my everything. And I'm in love with God. I'm totally in love with God. Hallelujah. And nothing is more important than me spreading the good news, than me preaching this gospel. This is first and foremost in my life. Nothing is more important than me preaching the truth. So God has to be first in your life. You got to make up your mind that God is going to be first in your life. So I want to go to about the Israelites. Everybody know the Israelites. I hope those Israelites, uh, Pharaoh had them in bondage for years and years and then god delivered them out of slavery well god took them out of slavery into the wilderness so he can work on it, you so sometimes god will take you into the wilderness so that he can work on you so that he can deliver you because there is things in us that god need to work on there's things that we've been through in childhood and things that we've been through in different relationships, you know, some of the sufferings and stuff that we've been through, it kind of molds and shapes our character. But, you know, the word of God say that we should be more Christ-like. So he took them in, because they had been under uh, Pharaoh for a long time, you know. And so he had to take them in the wilderness so he can heal and deliver them. Because Pharaoh was beating them, and I'm sure they had got bitter in the wilderness, and I'm sure that they heart had turned against God. You know, sometimes when you're in the wilderness for a long time, your heart can become bitter against God. But the thing is, you got to acknowledge that and you got to say, Lord, I'm sorry, I repent. 
I'm, you know, this is your will. Hallelujah. I wouldn't be able to preach this word to you like that if I had not went through that. Sometimes I have gotten, my heart have gotten bitter, you know, because sometimes it gets lonely. You, when God called you to do this, this is not a glorified job. Please trust me. <laughs> when God called you to do this, you will have to sit alone by yourself, you know, and uh, so that you could get that message to carry to God's people. And sometimes you be like, well, I want to have fun. This is a lonely life. I want to hang out with people. I want to, you know, I want to uh, <laughs> shoot the breeze or whatever. But, you know, this is more important to do. So this can be a very, very lonely life. And especially if it's been years and years and years, because when God set you apart and he called you to do something, he moves everybody. He moves your kids. He moves friends. And it's just you and God. And sometimes that becomes lonely because everybody was created for intimacy. And you say, God, it's lonely. But then you have to backtrack. Because the Bible say, would a man put his hand to the plow and then look back? Meaning, would you begin to work for me and then regret it? When, the, when it gets rough, would you say, Lord, never mind? Because God is faithful, I have to be faithful. And then that's when you repent. And you say, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. So it's nothing wrong with getting frustrated or sometimes getting a little bitter about life challenges. It's not wrong with that, but you really need to immediately repent. Go ahead and have your little pity party, but don't let that stay in your heart. You know, you have to sit and you have to think and you have to think about the goodness of the Lord and how good God has been to you. And you say, never mind, <laughs> not my will. Let your will be done, Lord, but give me the strength to continue to do what you call me to do. Amen. Hallelujah. And you got to move on from that pity party and you got to do what God wants you to do. So the Israelites got tired. I told that story because when God had Moses bring them out of Pharaoh's bondage, they went through the wilderness. That's time with God, spending with God, God talking, because God was talking to Moses and Moses was bringing the word back down from the mountain. Hallelujah. And Moses was bringing the word and then Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments. So when he came back down, I don't know how long Moses was up there sitting with God. But when he came back down, them doggo Israelites had made a golden calf to worship. Now, they knew God, OK, because they saw God part that red sea. These are the same Israelites that when God uh, delivered them from the hands of Pharaoh, God parted the Red Sea, hallelujah, and the word of God say they crossed on dry ground. So they had, that would, could have been, that would have been amazing to me. God parted the Red Sea, and then you're looking on both sides, and the, the water coming down, but then you're looking down, and you're walking on dry ground. Ain't no God like him. Can any other God do that? If they can, you know, somebody unmute and go ahead and tell me about can Buddha do that or any of them up bell or any of them other guys? No, they cannot. He is a Monty God, an amazing God, and there is none like him. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and say, there is none like him. Hallelujah. So Moses come down with the Ten Commandments all happy. So imagine me sitting here preaching Sunday after Sunday, and then I get on here one Sunday and somebody bring a golden calf talking about I'm worshiping. I'm worshiping. And it, I'm talking about one of the faithful ones. One of the ones that's been with me from day one. Now you got yourself a golden calf. Moses got mad. Moses was pissed. You know, what are y'all doing? And they had built this golden calf because, you know, a lot of times people want to worship something they can see. And that's would get most people because they can't see God and they sometimes they be like, Oh, is he really real? But the more you get to know God and the more you read his word and the more you get that intimacy with God, you will get to know that God is real. 
So God had did some mighty miracles for the Israelites and they made a golden calf. And then, so when they was working for Pharaoh, they wasn't getting barely nothing. So when they went into the wilderness, God was feeding them bread from heaven. Come on now. I don't know what that bread from heaven looked like, but I would, I'll take some right now. Hallelujah. That got to be better than natural food. And then they started complaining about that. Here they go. They want some flush. Don't we always want flush? I need me a man. I need me a woman <laughs> in my life. <laughs> God ain't enough. He's spirit. Hallelujah. He ain't enough for me. I need to get me some. I need to be with somebody. I need somebody to sleep with at night and on and on and on. So they started craving for flesh. I'm just trying to make a point. That ain't me I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Israelites. Okay. <laughs> so they started complaining to Moses. We just getting this bread from heaven. We want some meat. <laughs> and God got tired of them complaining. So that's why I said that when you start complaining, you better repent immediately because God hate complaining, you know, and don't go to bed on that. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Hallelujah. The word of God says, so you need to repent immediately. So God got so upset with them. He started throwing all kind of fish Fish, fish, meat, meat, meat. And they say they ate that meat till they got sick. See, they kept complaining and they overate gluttony. That's what that is. You know, God wasn't enough. What God was doing in their life wasn't enough. They wasn't grateful about God delivering them from that man that had worked them. They were building, uh, they were, what well, straw. They was building buildings with straw, you know. How hard was that with water and straw? So they wasn't even grateful that God had finally got them out of bondage. And they were in bondage to Pharaoh for years and years and years and years, you know. And so God got real frustrated with those Israelites. And it's real sad how they didn't trust God enough to provide. Come on now. How they didn't say, let your will be done, not my will be done. This is a patient walk. The word of God say, let patience have a perfect work. And that means, I'm sorry, ever since I've been preaching, I've been getting hoarse. <laughs> and that means that wherever God have us in life, we ought to be content. Paul said, I learned to be content in whatsoever state I was in. And you notice he used the word learn. So you have to learn that contentment because this flush has a habit of wanting more and more, or this flush has a habit of complaining and saying, Lord, why are you doing it like this? Lord, I don't want this. Why this got to be this way? Why I'm going through this? Nah, 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 nah. But what we're not looking at when we do that is the goodness of the Lord. We're not looking at the times where the Lord came through for us. We're not looking at the times when we know we should have been dead, but the Lord saved us from that death. You know, we're not looking at the time when the Lord did supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. So we need to focus more on the goodness of the Lord and not so much on what he's not doing at that time in our lives, because he already told us in his word, there is a time and a season for everything. So we need to always be content in the Lord. If something is going on in your life, guess what? God is allowing it to go on because God is always in control. And what you need to pray and say is, Lord, give me the strength to get through this. Because that was my prayer when I complained. I said, Lord, renew my strength. Let your will be done and give me the strength, God, and the patience to endure whatever it is that you need me to endure. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, uh, the uh, let me see. I talked about the golden calf. So the Candonites, they worship Baal. It's Candonites. I, I'm trying to pronounce that right. I, that's what made me late run late this morning trying to pronounce that word. <laughs> so they worship uh Baal, and I want to explain what kind of god Baal was. You know, so Baal is translated owner master ruler now this is the god that they worshiped ruler or lord he wants to control mankind the spirit of Baal is out there now whether y'all know it or not 
we we're we're dealing with the spirit of Bell. That spirit didn't die back there in uh in uh back way back when our ancestors lived or back there when the Israelites was around. No, that spirit is still alive. They kept that spirit alive. How did they keep that spirit alive? Well, I keep worshiping it. I wanted to say something. Spirits can't live without a body. They just don't float around in the air. Spirits need a body to operate out of. So the reason the spirit of Baal is still alive is because Baal is operating out of people. People are uh, worshiping Baal. They're allowing uh, his spirit to control them. So Baal was the chief of the uh, Canaanites, God, Canaanites, God. He was their chief God. They worshiped many gods, but Baal was the chief God. Um, let me see. The God and Father, wait, wait a minute. They tried to control. Hold on a minute. Can't read my own writing. So uh, that spirit tries to control God's people. That's what I want to say, because it tries to mimic everything that God do. And the spirit of Baal is a manipulator. Also, the spirit of Baal is a fertility God. OK. And I wanted to read. This is so important because I, I pulled up this article about that God. Give me one second, because I do want to read it because it's so important. Because a lot of times people don't believe that spirit is what it is, you know. Okay, so people would make sacrifices to him so they could have rich soil, much rain, good weather. So I'm thinking Bell might be that God that people was feeding that food to <laughs> in the nail place. This will hopefully bring them great crops and harvest. They believe Bell controlled such things as the rain. He also considered to be a sun god that was likely what was being challenged when Elijah the prophet declared Ahab. Um, the bell worshiping king, that there would be no rain in the land. Amen. So uh, Elijah's asked God to prove a point not to let it rain for three whole years. Hallelujah. And I've read that scripture many, many times, but I didn't know the root of uh, why Elijah did that. And this morning I got that revelation because that bell spirit thought that they were controlling the rain. And so he wanted to prove to the king, hey, look, my God controlled the rain, not your God. So God didn't let it rain on earth for three years to show he was proving himself to the people. I control everything, not the uh, the spirit uh, Baal that you are worshiping. Amen. It said it was a fertility God. That spirit controls the lust spirit. That uh, spirit controls people that's doing prostitution. People that's practicing in orgies, uh, the homosexual spirit. So the reason I wanted to teach on this spirit today, because that is a strong spirit. God want people to know that that's the spirit of Baal that has taken over the earth. And he want us to be wise. He want us to walk in wisdom and begin to pray for the world and pray that that spirit, that people would get delivered from that spirit. Amen. Anybody want the article? I can send it to him. Just uh, text me and I'll send you the article and you can read more on it. So idolatry is sin. Hallelujah. And what is sin? I'm going to go over to uh, Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21. So I just talked about the uh, the sin of lust. And that's a strong, that's a strong one. That lust come in many forms. And people could be easily fooled by it. And the reason uh, lust is so strong, because it pleasures the flesh. And this flesh likes to be pleasured. That's why a lot of times God will des deny us certain things that our flesh is desiring. Because, and uh, I'm thinking that's what he's doing to me. Because you got to be totally sold out to God. It's not about pleasing your flesh. Whether I've been alone a long time or I'm lonely, that's not the point. The whole point is this is God's will. And it's not about me pleasing my flesh. It's about building God's kingdom 
Hallelujah. It's about focusing on what I was born to do. It's about focusing on God and uh, him ordering my steps and him controlling my life and not me feeding my flesh and satisfying my flesh. That could come later. There's people in the Bible that was, there's a, a prophet that uh, she's the one that was uh, prophesizing that Christ would come to the earth. And the word of God says that she was married uh, seven years and then her husband died. So she was a young widow. And she was single until the Lord came back and was born. And she's the one that told everybody that the Lord was uh, was born, that the birth of Christ. We studied that on Friday, and that was real good uh, about the birth of Christ. That was our Bible study on Friday. So that prophet, God used her. It say that she sat in the synagogue day and night with the Lord, and she prophesied to the people the birth of Christ to get them ready for the coming of the Christ. So there are things in life more important than us ple pleasing our flesh. We are here to serve the Lord. It is about the Lord. We got to get that mindset. It's hard to get that mindset when we've been caught up so long in the pleasures of the world and the cares of the world. And the word of God tell us, don't get caught up with that stuff because that stuff is not what's important. The kingdom of God is important. And God want to prepare us for his second coming because he is coming back. And we don't want to be caught blindsided, you know. The word of God say that there were 10, uh, 10 people and 10 lamps. They had 10 lamps. And when God came back, only five was lit, meaning the rest, the other five let their light go out. They got tired of waiting on the Lord and they started doing whatever they wanted to do. But the other five, they waited patiently because they knew God was coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. So we want to wait patiently on the Lord, serve the Lord patiently, and we most of all, most of all, we want to say, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. Those are the second greatest words you can say to the Lord. The first greatest, greatest words you can say is, Lord, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. God can't use you if you don't surrender. And God can't use you if you don't have a mindset, not my will, but let your will be done. Because when God begin to use you, he has to take complete control. He has to move that flush out the way because there's no good thing in the flush. And your flush needs to die completely, completely, you know. And he wants to crucify our, our flush so that he could flow through us freely. Hallelujah. If we all up in the way, he can't flow through us. So I'm going to Galatians 19, 21. And these are the sins of idolatry. And these are the spirits of the flush that need to be crucified that needs to be uh, dead to us. Amen. So starting at, uh, where am I? I'm sorry. I just said it, 19. I'm sorry. Now the works of the flesh are evident. And I, I read these before, and I'll probably read them again. <laughs> the works of the flesh are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry. See, number 20 is idolatry, sorcery, Sorcery is like witchcraft. And I'm thinking sorcery, sorcery is when you go to the fortune tellers. I remember back in the day, I used to stay in the fortune tellers chair. That was so crazy of me. I was pregnant with my fourth son going to the fortune teller and not knowing that those spirits was enter, entering into my son because he was more vulnerable. He was a baby in my womb. And when he was born, he started seeing demons. He couldn't sleep at night. And those demons tormented him. So you got to be careful about going to see those fortune tellers. I was blind and I did not know that what I was doing um, was opening the door to evil for my son. And, you know, and I didn't realize what was going on until I became a Christian. Because when he was little, he's like, it's demons in the room. It's demons in the room. And I, was, I, did, I never understood why. You know, he would always see those demons. And even as an adult, he sees them. And then get this. You can bring curses on your kids by what you do. Your kid, that, that fruit that you sow, guess what? It falls on your kids. So he started doing fortune telling, ordering the cards and everything. Now, I never told him what I was doing when I was pregnant with him. But then he started getting all involved with that. So you have to be careful what you do in your life because... Like those Israelites, 
their parents was disobedient to God and they learned to be disobedient to God from their parents. And so, you know, the curses fall on the children to the fourth generation, the word of God says. So if we're not living right, guess what? Our kids pay for that, our grands and our great grands. And it's the same way. You can, bl you can bring blessings on your kids and your grands and your great grace by living right. When God see you living right, then he begin to bless your family because everything attached to you has to be blessed. That's why it's so important to live right. You got to remember, this is not only about you. This is about, you know, your children. This is about your children, your grands, your great grands. So that's something to think about when we out there tripping in the world. So hatred, contentious, jealousies, that jealous spirit, that's a strong one. And that jump on people and they don't try to fight it off, you know, and it's easy to jump on you. Sometimes I'll be on social media and people be getting engaged and people been married a long, long, long time. And that little jealousy will try to creep, creep up in there, creep, creep, creep. But then I say, you know what, Lord, that's their life. This is the life you gave me and that's their life. So. Um, I'm not saying that these spirits are not going to attack you, but you need to deal with them when they come because that's covenant. You covenant they life. That's they life. That's the life God blessed them with. He reigned on the just as well as the unjust. Be happy and satisfied with the life that God has given you. You never know what God has in store for you. But if you start getting jealous about what other people got, you block your own blessings. I do believe that. So also outbursts of wrath. That's mean outbursts of anger. Like the person I work with always yelling and throwing stuff. That's outbursts of um, wrath. Selfish ambition. You stepping on people to climb up the ladder. You don't care who you hurting. Long as you succeed, you know, uh, you're full of pride, full of selfish ambition. That's a sin. Uh, decisions, that's arguing all the time. Heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness. So if you're getting drunk, Cause when you get drunk, it's kind of like the devil could take control. How I know I used to get drunk and do some stupid stuff. Trust me. I wake up and be like, why did I do that? When you get drunk, that devil can creep in and have you do stuff. I ain't gonna get in no details. You either, Ellie. But when you get drunk, you do <laughs> you do some stuff that your natural character wouldn't have done. So that's why God don't want you getting all drunk up, you know. So, and it says, um, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So practicing all that sinful stuff, we can't inherit the kingdom of God. And the whole purpose of us coming here on Sunday and listening to the word of God is to let God change our lives, even me. You know, God is still working on me, I tell you. He's working on us all. But the whole point is to let God work on us. Let God change us. I know we can't do it alone. I know I can't, you know. And that's all God wants us to do. He wants us to hear the word, receive the word, trust in the word, and allow the word to come and work in our lives. Amen. So I'm going to go to... Uh, First, I want to say that the Lord is the only living true God, and I'm going to prove that in Jeremiah chapter 10, 10 to 16. I went back to my old Bible. The other Bible was too hard to turn the pages. <laughs> Jeremiah 10, uh, verse 10. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living and the everlasting King. At his wrath, the earth will tremble and the nations will not be able to endure his indignation. Mm, that's something I right did. That's powerful. <clears throat> I would meditate on that for a minute. Thus you shall say to them, the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under the heavens. So God is going to do away with all these false gods. I'm telling you, God is coming in. Hallelujah. Cause he's making way to come back to take us on home to heaven. And so he's coming back to this earth 
And I'm telling you, his power is going to be made known. He said, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. That's scripture. I read that in the Bible. I didn't just make that up. Amen. So he's going to prove himself. He's just waiting for the right time. Because remember, I said there's a time and a season for everything. Amen. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom. See, this is the Lord's world. This is God made the world. God made the earth. He is creator of all things. Man is just taking over and thinking that they are in control. And I just laugh at him because man's wisdom is foolishness to God. And God's sitting up laughing at him too. Because in God's perfect timing, God's going to start turning some stuff around. Amen. And I believe that with all my heart. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom and is stretched out and has stretched out the heavens at his discretion. When he utters his voice, there is, there is a multitude of waters in heaven and he causes the vapors to ascend from the earth, from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for rain. Mm. He brings wind out of his treasures. He's the one that makes the lightning. Hallelujah. They try to come up with some other reason why it's lightning. Scientists, they got their own theory about it. But this word just said he make the lightning. So they are lie and the word of God is true. Everyone is dull hauled without knowledge. Every metalsmith, that's these people that's making these uh these uh these idols and these images and encouraging people to do idol worshiping. That's who he's talking about. The metal Smith is put to shame by his, by an image for his molden image is falsehood. And there is no breath in them. God is saying that those images, they, he's the only living, breathing God. Amen. Those images don't talk, don't breathe, don't do anything. He's already proven himself when he walked the earth that he is God. Amen. He left us witnesses that wrote this Bible that he did walk the earth. That is wonderful. I just got the revelation of when he sent his son Jesus here. It, it was also to prove to us that he's real, that he's a loving God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thank God for giving his only begotten son. Hallelujah. That they would, that believe on him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for sending your son to save our souls. Hallelujah. Everyone is dull hearted without knowledge. Every metal smith is put to shame by his image. For his molding image is falsehood and there's no breath in them. They are futile, a work of errors in the time of their punishment. They shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them for he is the maker of all things. Hallelujah. And Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Hallelujah. The Lord of hosts. The Lord of heaven is his name. He is God above all gods. Over in Psalm 97. I'm going to read that to you. Hallelujah. David says he is God of all gods and Lord of all lords. Hallelujah. Go to Psalm 97 with me. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of owls be glad. Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Hallelujah. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. See that? He's a mighty God. People better think, stop thinking God's some punk that they can run over. <laughs> that he's some pushover. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we ain't got to serve him, ain't we? I wouldn't want to be in their shoes, you know, and that's why it's so important to get the word of God out because people are in darkness. And when God bring you to his light, then you got to go enlighten somebody else. Amen. Don't leave folks in the dark because that, that ain't right. They have, Some people don't have a clue, not a clue, you know, about God and how mighty and how wonderful he is. So that's why it's so important to spread the good news of the Lord. Amen. His lightnings light the world, the earth sees and trembles, the mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. Mm. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, the heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. Hallelujah. 
that all be put to shame who serve carved Im carven images, who boast of idols, worship him and worship them. All you gods, Zion hears and is glad and the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high above the earth, all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. See, you got to hate evil. If you say you love the Lord, then you got to hate what is wrong. I, I just read it. <laughs> you who love the Lord hate evil. You got to love what the Lord love and hate what the Lord hates. Amen. He, pres he preserved the soul of his saints and he delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. See, when you serving the Lord and you walking up right before God, you ain't got to worry about um, anything. First of all, no weapon formed against you going to prosper. But also you ain't got to worry about when the evilness hit this earth. You're covered. You ain't got to worry about the enemy coming up against you or nothing happening to you. That's a wonderful thing to feel safe and secure in his arms. I feel so safe. I don't get upset or nothing about what's going on on this earth because that ain't my business. What is my business is the kingdom things. I set my mind on kingdom things like I preached last week. Set your mind on heavenly things because if I start uh, worrying about what's happening in the earth and uh, worrying about current events, it's going to throw me off. I'm going to be distracted because I can't keep my mind on the Lord and have pe perfect peace and then start worrying about what's going on. And God is in control. I ain't got to worry about nothing. Look at the news and all this is going on. All I got to do is pray and pray for people and ask, put this in, put it in God's hands. So you don't want to start getting anxious about what's going on around you or what's even with prices going up. Anything is sky high. And I know people getting anxious about that. You know, it's like, oh my God, food is high. This is high. No, don't get anxious. Say, Lord, but I know you will provide because you're Jeho Jehovah Jireh. You will supply all my needs, oh Lord, according to your riches and glory. I've been there. I've been through the hard times. And guess what? God provided day by day. Hallelujah. And I didn't complain like them Israelites complain. Whatever little bit he was giving me, I was grateful. Come on. Somebody need to be grateful to the Lord. You got to always be grateful. It wasn't a whole lot, a little bit at a time, but I was grateful. I was grateful that I had a roof over my head. Hallelujah. I was grateful. I was able to take care of my kids. You know, I take pride in saying this. I had nine kids and I didn't have to depend on a uh, state welfare or none of that because God blessed me with them kids. And he provided, he made a way for me to take care of them. And I take pride in knowing that God was with me every step of the way. Amen. So that, that's another thing you need to say. You know what? Lord, thank you for everything that you have done in my life. God, and I'm not putting down people that had to use it. I'm just telling my testimony. Amen. That God, he allowed me to be able to provide for my children to get up and go to work, hallelujah, to drop them at the daycare and carry my butt to work. I could have stayed home and got a big check because I had a lot of kids. <laughs> that check would have been big. Food stamps would have been about 2000 I think. <laughs> I could have took the easy way, but that wasn't God's will. God, get up, go to work, and take care of the kids that um, I allowed you to bring in this world. Amen. I'm going to go down to 11. Yeah. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. You know what that light is? Light is sown for the righteous. The light is the word that I'm speaking now out of the word of God. When I speak this and you come every Sunday, now you're walking in the marvelous light. Hallelujah. There's a song. I ain't going to sing it, y'all. But it says, walk in the light, walk in the marvelous light of the Lord. So when you're walking in that light, you could be happy. You could be proud. You could feel secure because guess what? You're gaining wisdom and now you're not going to be fooled by the world and it's foolishness because idol worshiping is foolishness. The word of God say Idol idolatry is foolishness. There is nothing that's true, but whatever is in this word, if it's not lining up, I tell you this, if it's not lining up in the word of God, then it's foolishness. If you see something, you read something, Double check it with the Bible. That's what I do when I read something. Though. That article I read, 
I just read that article. I went in this word and read the scriptures, you know. So you got to always cross check with the Bible because, you know, people can say anything. But if it's lining up in the word of God, then you can believe that it is true. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm a, um, I read above all gods. He is above all gods. And I'm coming to my closing scripture. I guess I ain't going to be long today. And I'm going to Judges 2, verses 11 and 18. And I want to talk about Israel's unfaithfulness. I'm going to close out with how Israel was unfaithful and how we need to learn to be faithful. Hallelujah. Because in Deuteronomy, it said in 28, it says that there are blessings for obedience. And then there's curses for disobedience. You want to be blessed and highly favored. Amen. You want the blessings of the Lord over your life. You want that relationship with God. When you're dealing with something, God answers you right away. I'm telling you, if you're faithful to God, God will be faithful to you. And I say this really, really, really humble. Whenever I'm going through something and I go straight to the word of God and boom, God gives me my answer. And when he gives me my answer, it gives me peace in my spirit. And I'm like, Lord, it is well with my soul. If that's the way you're doing it, then it's well with my soul. So you need to... um. I always say, Lord, it is well with my soul. You need to see God in his word, not lean to your own understanding. Like Proverbs 3 say, it say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Uh, lean not to your own understanding. He will direct your path. So allow God to direct your path because life is pretty hard without God. I've tried it. Life can be something else. I, I feel so safe and so secure, you know, now that I know that God is ordering my steps, now that I know that I'm doing it God's way with all my heart, you know, it feels like I got this peace that I can't explain, you know. I got this calmness in my spirit. I know that nothing can come up against me. And I really believe that scripture that no weapon that is formed against me can prosper. I know that God got my back every step of the way. Anything I have to deal with, God is in control of it. I don't have to deal with none of my problems. I don't have to fret about anything. It's a fret not yourself because of the evil doer. When evil come up against you, as long as you got this relationship with God and you're faithful to God, God going to be faithful to you. When somebody come up against you with evilness, hold your peace. I had to learn that. Hold your peace. Don't even open your mouth because vengeance is the Lord. The word of God say the battle is mine. So we don't have to fight our own battles. Let God fight your battle and just live your life peacefully. You know, you shouldn't be running around fretting about this, that, because worrying don't change a thing. Worrying has never changed anything. Amen. So put all your hope and all your trust in God. Hallelujah. Judges 2, 11 to 18. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Baal. Look at that. They started serving Baal. You ever seen some Christians? Somebody asked me, uh, there was this uh, bishop, Carlton Pearson. And he was a bishop for many years. And I think he was a musician too, I think. And I don't know what happened in that bishop's life, but he turned on God. And you can Google and look up Carlton Pearson, I'm sure. His picture and that story will come up. So he turned his back on God and he started saying that there was no hell, that God wasn't going to send nobody to hell. And he started saying like homosexuality was not a sin. And um, he just really, really came away from the word. And now he's in a Unitarian church. Is that how you say it? Uh, Universal, Unitarian or whatever. So he's in that church now. And so I have a friend that's dating this guy that's in that faith and she's, uh, you know, studying to be a Christian and she called me up. Now here go the devil going to try to fool her because she, she want to lean more to his direction. Cause see, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you can idolize people. You so in love with him, you get ready to make the decision that, Oh, maybe he's right. And you know, God is real, you know? And she was like, well, what about him? And, this and that. And I told her straight up. I said, you know what? In order for that man to turn his back on God, he never knew God. 
and maybe they exalted him too fast. Cause sometimes you could he got exalted to a bishop real, you know, real quick and stuff like that. But there is no way that he knew God and turned his back on God. The word of God say to know God is to love God. Oh, taste and see, hallelujah, that the Lord is good. There's no way that bishop was studying this word like that. And then like, oh, never mind. Obviously, bishop wasn't reading his Bible. I can get, there's a lot of preachers don't read their word. Don't get shocked by it. Ooh, nope. You know what they do? When it's time for a service, when it's time for them to preach, they go in and find what they're going to preach on. But they're not, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved, you know, rightly dividing the truth. A workman that won't be ashamed. He made himself ashamed when he did that. So I told us, no, nah, he didn't know God and he wasn't studying God's word because it's in here. It's in Revelations that hell is real. Anybody want to know that hell is real? It's in the Bible. Nobody's making it up, you know, read it. The devil don't want you to read this Bible. Why? There's treasures in this word. There is hidden treasure in the word. And wisdom is the principal thing. The more wisdom you get, the less the devil will be able to control your life. That's why he don't want us to read this word, because he loses his grip on us when we read the word of God. Because guess what? Sin, the word washes us. It purifies us. It renews our mind. You know, it give, give us the introduction to Christ. It gives us that intimacy with Christ. Because you could just read the word um and and really not get nothing out of it if you don't have the right motives for reading it you know i said before you got to go in the word of god with the right motives not i seen people just throwing scriptures around and they can quote them i don't have a good memory of where all the scriptures are when i flip through the bible i can remember where they at but just to sit and say oh you can find that and no because it's not about that <laughs> what it is about is being a hearer of the word and doing the word that's what it's about you can know all you want. That ain't going to get you into heaven. Knowing the word, you're going to stand before Christ and say, oh, yeah, I knew all you. And then God was like, yeah, that's why I'm holding you accountable because you knew it, <laughs> but you didn't live it. So, you know, I felt like she was asking me that to see if I was going to say, yeah, you know, I don't, you know, what happened to him or no, I told no, the bishop didn't know the Lord. The bishop wasn't reading his word because the bush, bishop when the black backslid that quick, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know, but continue to pray for him that he would find his way back to the light. Cause right now he's definitely in the darkness. Amen. Then the children, I'm gonna get through this y'all. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and Sir Baal. And they forsook God of their, they forsook the God of their fathers who brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them. See, they served the, uh, the Canaanite God and all of them. They started serving Baal. And they bowed down to them. Look at that. They started bowing down the false gods. Don't let the devil fool you. Uh, and they provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal. That's that's crazy. Um, I think this word is the actuaries. The actuaries or something like that. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. So he delivered them into the hands of the plunders. That's into the hand of their enemies, into the hand of the false God who despoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies. Anybody keep saying that he's a merciful and a loving God? Yeah, he is. But this right here is telling me that if you want to keep on following behind evil, then he'll just release you. Somebody better go ahead and read Judges. Because and stop riding on grace and mercy. Because this right here telling me that if you keep serving the devil, he'll take his hands off of you. Wow, that's powerful right there. Mm. It said he sold them into the hands of those that despoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around, so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Mm. He let the enemies overtake them. Wherever they went, the hand of the Lord was against them. They brought evil against them. Mm. For a calamity against them for calamity, as the Lord has said, and as the Lord has sworn to them, and they were greatly distressed. Wow. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the hands who plundered them. So the judges are the, the prophets, the ministers that's that is preaching the truth to you. That when God called them judges, 
they're judging the sin. Amen. They're, they're being judged. They're judging the sinful nature, not so much the person. Because a lot of times people are like, oh, you can't judge me. But I'm not judging you. I'm judging that sin that got you all in bondage and all entangled. And so we're on war against flesh and blood principalities. So when you see your family member all tangled up in some kind of sinful thing, then, yeah, you got to speak the truth to them. Or you can just leave them there and let them go head on and not see them in heaven. And I don't think that's fair, you know. So there will be a time in your Christian life that you got to begin to speak the truth. Just like I'm sitting here speaking the truth. My whole family ain't saved. But that ain't going to stop me from sitting here speaking. I speak against homosexuality. I'm not going to sit here and be scared to speak against that. Because guess what? It's in the word of God. It is God's word. It is God's truth. And I'm not accountable to people. I'm accountable to God. I'm going to stand for this truth. I don't care who come, who because this is my soul at stake. I ain't going to jeopardize my soul because you want to live the way you want to live. I've decided to get on this road and live right. So now you're accountable for your sins and I'm accountable for mine. And I'm accountable when I went to that, uh, when I went to the altar and got ordained and they gave me the charge before many witnesses that was there. I promised that I would preach this word in season, out of season, preach the truth. So if you stand up there and you make that vow to God, it's a terrible thing to make a vow to God and then back down from it. If you stand there, you take that charge and you say, Lord, okay, um, I take the charge to be your minister, then you got to preach the truth. It's not about hurting people's feelings. It's about getting people delivered. It's about getting their souls to heaven. This is not about our emotions. It's about, it's about everlasting life. You know, it's about the eternal life. It's not about this temporary life down here on earth. And some people get that mixed up. This is passing away. The Lord coming back, whether we like it or not. The Lord coming back to this earth. Hallelujah. The end of the world coming. Whether we want to believe it. don't matter if you don't believe it. It's going to happen. It's in the word of God. Why not prepare for that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, where was I at? I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, and then when the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For the Lord was moved to pity by the groaning because there was there who those who oppressed them and harassed them. So their enemies, because oh, sin is sin. In the bondage of sin, there's nothing happy or peaceful about it. I've been there and did that, you know. And your enemies don't like you. Those out there, like if you backslide and you decide to go back in the world, the Bible say when a house is swept clean uh, and you decide to go back, seven more strongholds come. Seven more demons come. Because Satan is mad because you gave your life. to. This is very important because you gave your life to Christ in the first place. And so when you try to go back to Satan, he retaliate and the word of God says seven more demons so that he brings seven more strong men, strong demons so that you don't get out of bondage again. Each time that you go back into sin, it's harder and harder to get out. That's why don't go back. Keep pushing your way forward. It's better to keep pushing forward than going backwards. Amen. So that was my closing scripture. Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate you guys. Um, I know that you're really getting something out of this. The Lord is awesome in all his ways. And may he bless his word. And may he bless your soul. I can tell that this word went into good soil today. Amen. And I'm going to let Sister Clay close us out with prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And praise God for that message today about idols. Thank you for breaking it down. I always go into those nail places. I see all those Buddhas and all that. And I'm like, what is yeah. going on? They got all that food see? down there. And I'm like, I'm so glad you broke that down because I just never paid attention to it. I just thought, I don't know. I was just thinking something. I wasn't even thinking. I was just like, but now I know. Yeah, see, that's the guy he broke that down them. today about idol worshiping and yeah, yeah it's it, it 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 is something. It gets deep, right? So I I, mean, I want y'all to inbox me for that article. I didn't want to take all the time to read the article, but please in, uh, send me a message to my phone. I want to send you this article because this article is really deep. 
Okay. And it verse of scripture. So it is the word of God. Mm, mm, mm. Well, Father God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for using Pastor Beverly, Lord Father God. We love that word. It's a mighty word, Lord Father God. Oh, Father God, we want to thank you for the holy field service that we had today, Lord Father God. Father, may we practice what we have been taught so that we can come like Christ and bear more fruit for the kingdom, yes. Lord Father God. Yes. Oh, Father God, let everything we do be in line with your word, Lord Father God. Yes, Lord. Lord, be with us as we leave this Bible study and grant us yes. peace in our hearts, Lord Father God. Oh, yes. Father God, we thank you, Lord Father God. We thank you for the week. We thank you for the word. May yes. you study your word and encourage others in the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming again. Amen. And y'all have a blessed Amen. and a prosperous week. And may the Lord go with you and watch over you through the week. Hallelujah. Amen. And hold on to this word, you know. Amen. Meditate Amen. on it. Because that was a powerful word today. Yes. That, that, yes. Word, that was heavy. It, it was hard yes. to get it out. And I know when uh <laughs> I know when the enemy mad about something because that thing yeah. was powerful and share it with other people, you yeah. know. That's gonna don't keep it to yourself. That's what the mm -hmm. word of God is for, you know. Amen. It's, um, to be shared, you know, it's about yeah. the kingdom of God because a lot of people don't know about idol worshiping and, mm -hmm. and they just think it ain't nothing, but right. you no, know, it is something. I read where the wrath of God came down. I ain't gonna start preaching again. But I read where the wrath of God came down on those Israelites. So mm -hmm. if you keep practicing sin and idol worshiping and worshiping idols and false gods and stuff mm -hmm. like that, then, you know, then the wrath of God will come down on you. And when you read that article, there's a lot of perversion attached to that God. Um, that's why I really want you to read. I didn't want to say that with TV Corden because it had some stuff in there that was a little rated R as far as uh the uh the idol uh bell i think it was it's a fertility god well they made a statue that was made out of the man's organ private organ and they was worshiping mm -hmm. that and that's how the prostitutes was worshiping that and mm -hmm. people practicing in orgy so that's that uh that guy right